So a few weeks back, Apple announced a new coffee table book. We talked about it a little bit on this show titled Designed by Apple in California. It's an expensive, many people would say, photo <laughs> collection of many of Apple's <laughs> products uh, from over the course of the company's existence. Joining us to talk a little bit about the broad collection of products is Stephen Hackett from 512 Pixels. How's it going, Stephen? It's, uh, it's going well. How, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's great to get you on here. So um, what kind of caught our attention, Megan's, and then she passed it to me, and it was uh, really impressive. You produced a video. It's up on YouTube that matches the actual hardware shown in the book with hardware from your own collection. Um, I have to, I mean, first of all, how long have you been collecting this, this kind of hardware? <laughs> this is an expensive hobby. Uh, it is. It can be an expensive hobby. I started a couple of years ago. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a G4 Cube for a birthday present, and something about it just really spoke to me. And then you know you're you're up at late at night on eBay on your phone, and you're on Craigslist, and you're you know emailing people. And before you know it, you know they have this photo book, and I was flipping through it, um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have almost all of this stuff. Wow. And, uh, and then I spent 48 hours in my office <laughs> filming and, and, uh, now it's out there for everyone to enjoy slash mock. <laughs> <laughs> I would not mock it. Cause I think it's actually really well done now. Um, obviously it's a short, well, I don't know. What is the video about four minutes? Is everything represented here or are there things you left out? Uh, there were a couple of things uh, that I left out. Like I couldn't find one of my Apple TVs. I know I have it somewhere, but I think got lost in the move somewhere. Uh, and there are some things in the book that I that I don't have, but uh, the vast majority of what of what overlaps um, I ended up in the in the video. Okay, so the don't have part. When you're a collector of this kind of stuff, <laughs> very curious to know what you don't have and what you wish. Well, I guess what you wish you really had, what you're envious of when you've got a book like this. Yeah, I mean, so so right now I'm trying to track down a, a couple of items. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm sort of lacking now is before this book. You know, that's th really interesting. This book is is really kind of like Johnny Ive and Steve Jobs' return. Like it's that era of Apple. It's not, right. you know, be before 97 or 98. In fact, the first thing in the book isn't even the original iMac. It's the uh, slot loading iMac, which was a couple of revisions in. So a lot of what I'm looking for now is kind of before this book, but, um, you know, I kind of chuckled uh, the Mac Pro, the 2013 Mac Pro is in there. And I, I don't have one of those. But I think, you know, if we revisit this in uh, five or 10 years, I think I'll probably have have one of those first generation Mac Pros on the shelf. <laughs> so now I have many of those iPods, but most of them went through the wash at some point and don't work. <laughs> does Does most of your stuff work that you're showing off here or some of it not work? Uh, mo most of it does. So, you know, some of the iPods are kind of hit or miss with batteries and that sort of thing. Uh, almost all the, the computers in the collection uh, boot and run, um, especially again, this era, you know, the last 10 or 15 years, when you get older than that, like I've got some stuff from the, the mid nineties and some stuff from the eighties. And that's, that's a little harder to keep running. I've got some stuff that, you know, could use uh, some, some repair, but for the most part, uh, stuff boots and runs. And it, it's fun to, fire something up and, you know, play Oregon Trail or something like we, like we did way back in school. <laughs> <laughs> I have to imagine also when you're buying these off of like Craigslist and eBay, I mean, are they, are the systems wiped off and clean or do you find like old legacy software installed or there? Or people's credit card numbers. Uh, maybe, <laughs> unfortunately, but you know, that happens too, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're talking about Mac OS 10, you know, yeah. maybe worst cases, there's a user account on there and you can't get into it. Uh, the older stuff, it, it ranges wildly. I've, you know, I've purchased machines where the, the seller says, you know, I'm going to pull the hard drive and I'm totally fine with that. It just depends. Um, I have a, a pretty large software library now too. So if I need to rebuild something, say, you know, I get a power book and I want to put OS 9 on it, uh, I can do that. So uh, if anything boots and runs, one of the first things I do is I, at the very least, format the drive, even if I don't install something, just so I have a clear conscience that I don't have anyone else's data, you yeah. know, hanging out in the studio. For sure. So I'm probably going to ruin my Apple uh, fangirl cred here, but what's the deal with the socks? What's the story behind those? <laughs> it's this crazy accessory that Apple put out. It's like these five, I mean, we're talking about your your, your awesome R2D2 Christmas sweater. Like that's what these things are. Like they're knit like iPod <laughs> sleeves, really. They're not really protective cases, of course. I mean, a sweater isn't protective at all. Uh, but they came in five colors and there's actually a sixth one that's not in the book that they gave away at the Boston Apple store when they opened. It's a red iPod sock and it says Boston on it, which is kind of cool. And it's like this weird little thing. Like I have no idea what Apple made it. They sold it for like eight years. Um, 
uh, who knows? I mean, I, who knows? But I, I kind of find it funny. I kind of, you know, I think it's a, a cute little accessory that I guess some people bought. I don't know. I bought mine on eBay. I didn't even buy them new. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe if you have a weird shaped foot too, it might work as a sock. Tiny foot. Um, yeah, tiny. Yeah, tiny, tiny and square <laughs> rectangular foot. <laughs> Uh, you have a click wheel in your foot. You're set. <laughs> right. uh, where do you keep all this stuff? I mean, I, I have to imagine in when you're collecting items like this, like they aren't small. Well, some of them are small. And I think I, actually Apple prides itself on some of these items being small. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah. do you have a lot of space to store this stuff? Is it easy to kind of peruse for you to find what you're looking for? Uh, it's it's better than it used to be. So um, I'm a full-time podcaster and video maker and writer. So I have a studio and about half the square footage of the studio is now uh, two sets of shelving where a lot of the computers are. But like the iPods and stuff, what I've discovered is file cabinets work really well once you take everything out of them. So, you know, you can put iPods and iPads and like small things into file cabinets. It's really dense. Um, but it is a problem. You know, I've got, uh, for instance, I have all 13 colors of the iMac G3 <laughs> and they take up a ton of space. And so right now some of those are like kind of neatly uh, on the floor, uh, kind of against the baseboard. I gotta, I gotta work through that still. <laughs> gotta fan them out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you're going so far as to not just collect one of every item, but to collect all of the color variations, um, that takes it to a whole another, another level. Are you buying, I yeah. mean, you're, so you're buying these obviously many years after their heyday. Does that mean that you're paying not very much for these things or are they still pretty expensive? Uh, it, it really depends on what it is. So something like the, the 20th anniversary Mac, that I have an embarrassing amount of money was spent on that. Uh, but other stuff, you know, like the IMAX, for instance, you can pick up a nice IMAX G3 for maybe a hundred bucks. Okay. Um, those 13, I put a blog post up and I said, hey, I want to do a video with all 13 color IMAX. If you have one you're willing to part with, let me know. And so about half of those IMAX came from readers of 512 pixels. And, you know, I, you know, some people didn't even let me pay shipping. You know, some people did. Uh, but about half of those were given to me for the project. And so that, that helps, you know, it helps the budget. Sure. Um, but it really just kind of depends on, on what you're looking for. And there's, you know, there's highs and lows to it. Some things will be in more demand for a period for some reason. And then, uh, you know, then kind of know, you know, they'll, they'll fade from prominence and, and, and be cheaper. Um, I just, you, you know, you got to kind of look around and, and see, uh, see what things are going for. Mm -hmm. So I know you became world famous a couple months ago when your iPhone 7, your brand new <laughs> iPhone 7 started hissing um, and you exchanged yeah. it. They gave you a new one. Um, do you think like in a couple of years you'll be on eBay looking for a hissing iPhone 7? <laughs> you know, uh, I actually don't have very many old iPhones in the collection. I'm like, you know, like I think most like Apple fans, uh, I have a few vices. Uh, I think John Gruber said this once that one of his vices was buying a new iPhone every year. And I have that. So <laughs> I always like sell the old iPhone to bankroll the new one. <laughs> uh, so at some point I'll be chasing all those around. And uh, yeah, if I get a hissing one, then I'll just, uh, that'll just be like the universe, um, you know, getting back at me for that, for that YouTube video. Yeah, you can make sure and frame that and put it on the wall. It'll be like framing a first dollar <laughs> bill or something. Uh, exactly. So obviously you're very connected to kind of all, all things, Apple, all, Apple hardware, all this kind of stuff. We're near the holiday season while well, we're actually in the thick of the holiday season at this point. Uh, if people have things that they want to buy for their Apple, you know, whatever they want to buy a gift that's Apple, what should they buy? What do you think? Yeah. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of, uh, like accessories that make your setup like cleaner and nicer and neater. So I picked two things kind of in that vein. Um, the first is uh, a uh, combination iPhone, Apple Watch stand by a company called Studio Neat, the material dock. It's made out of walnut and cork. It's really nice looking. Um, you put your Apple cables in it and you can charge your devices. And it's really nice. Like it's so much nicer than having a lightning cable, you know, across your desk or across your nightstand where you can just put your phone and watch down on this this nicely designed thing and it's all kind of tidy. Uh, the other thing that I really like, in fact, I just, in fact, I just bought one uh, for myself is the 12 South backpack. And it's just a little um, kind of aluminum ledge and it's got some, some uh, little, uh, I don't know what you call it, like little attachments that go on the, the back of the foot of an iMac or the old Thunderbolt display. And so what it does, it puts a horizontal shelf behind your display. So you can put a, uh, like an external hard drive or a USB hub or a Thunderbolt hub. And it's not on your desk. It's like suspended behind the iMac on the shelf, nice and secure, nice and tight, but out of sight and kind of out of mind. And so I just picked one of those up. I'm going to put my time machine USB three hard drive on that. So it's not kind of floating around behind my, my desk. And uh, it's just a nice way to kind of tidy things up. You know, if you, 
if you have a lot of stuff on my desk, I'm sure a lot of people do. Uh, anything I can do to, to minimize the clutter is something that, that uh, I always enjoy. That's, That's cool. Like you could put your phone back there and then you wouldn't be like, if you had notifications turned off and you needed to work, you could put your phone and hide it. <laughs> exactly. Out of, sight, out of mind. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So it's a, just, you know, really versatile. Um, they even have a picture on their website, I think, of like a MacBook Air back there on a Thunderbolt display. So you can really make a nice, clean, minimal setup uh, with the little, you know, little accessory. Nice. Cool. Well, thanks for um, taking time to kind of talk to us about all this stuff. Oh, actually, my last question real quick. Is the Apple Book worth the price tag? Because it's expensive. It's like $199 for the 10.2, yeah. you know, the smaller version of the book, $299 for the 13-inch uh, version of the book. What do you think? It's real expensive. I would be more willing to recommend it as a gift if Apple had included the stories behind the products. Yeah. Like I could have made this book. I mean, I basically <laughs> did a YouTube channel. <laughs> right. um, I, I wish Apple had gone more into the how and the why and, and the reasons behind the products and the decisions they made. Uh, if they had, it would have been a no brainer recommendation for me at this point. I think it's only probably worth it if you're a really hardcore fan uh, or really have someone in your life, you know, these holidays that's really into this stuff. I think for even like the casual user, that's a pretty big uh, expenditure for something that may be hard to justify. Yeah. Well, that's really cool stuff. Thanks so much for talking with us about this. Uh, Stephen Hackett, of course, 512pixels.net. Where do you want people to go to find out all the work that you do? Yeah, yeah. 512pixels.net is great. Uh, and then I uh, podcast over at relay.fm. So you can find me uh, either two of those sites. Right on. Excellent. Thanks for taking the time, Stephen. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great night.